uh, final race in the uh, Moto3 and uh, Melbourne Territory Clubman series with the red light out and the, uh, the Moto3 Grand Prix machines are away and uh, Taylor Ralph being challenged by uh, Gordon McDonald on the start there but uh, once she was able to get the power down on that Moto3 machine just managed to uh, pull ahead but uh, Lawson Walters will uh, lead them down into uh, turn one for the first time from uh, Lachlan Cavney and Taylor Ralph in third then it's the Big Mac Gordon McDonald on bike number seven the local man and uh, as Ooh. Big Kelly was saying, he's uh, quite astute at doing uh, a bit of historic racing as well. Yeah, I'm just looking at um, Rockland Cavney there, having a good look at uh, Lawson Morgans as they came out of turn one into turn two before Lawson Morgans just used that extra little bit of horsepower of the KDM Grand Prix style machine over the Honda Moto 3 machine of Rockland Cavney just to get about two or three bike lengths. But as soon as you say that, into the hairpin goes Cavney and almost touched the back wheel of Lawson Morgans' bike. He actually had to jump off the throttle. As, uh, and also Taylor Ralph, she was also saying because of all the padding on her, her chin, she's finding it hard to bend the neck and actually get under the bubble of the screen of the uh, Honda Moto 3 machine to actually get out of the wind and increase that aerodynamic capability of it. Well, that was also uh, really good of Wayne Maxwell to uh, lend her a helmet for the other uh, weekend after he uh, destroyed hers uh, yesterday. So, I'm sure you would have given it to her too. You might have a few Bell helmets. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, she'll probably be a big fan of the Bell helmets after, uh, after this weekend, especially considering the courage that she's shown in these two races. And it's also interesting to know, Bracky, that she appears to have her hair out, uh, unlike yesterday, where I think she had the hair up in the bun underneath the helmet well, as well. You said you always learn by your mistakes, Phil, and I think that's another one that she's learned uh, a little bit about in the last 24 hours. There goes uh, well, the last of our uh, Grand Prix style machines, the typical production bike of uh, Mick Heffer and he's about to uh, come under attack from uh, the first of our Clubland riders uh, and that's Gary Lambert on the uh, 600 uh, Suzuki GSX-R. Yeah, uh, <coughs> the boys from the Terra Club up here, that's uh, the Top End Road Racing Association which is the acronym is Terra. Um, there's, uh, as Mick Kelly said to us, he's been living up here with the 2001 Australian Super, uh, 250cc production champion. He said that uh, since this track has been uh, constructed, that the, the level of competition, when now that they've got something, uh, well, something decent, this is probably a world-class facility they've got here, to come along and uh, any day of the week, you can just bring them up and uh, pay a few measly dollars to come and test. There's no, uh, you can come out here as much, and have as much fun as you like. And uh, Kelly says it's really lifted the, uh, the talent and the quality of the racing up here in the Northern Territory. Well, look at Cavney now, Braxley, as they come down the start, finish straight to uh, complete the second lap. He is still right with Lawson Walters. In fact, he set the fastest lap of the race, a 16.7, two tenths of a second faster than Lawson Walters on the first flying lap of the Hidden Valley Circuit. Taylor Ralph, and she's still pulling off one minute, uh, 19 laps, Braxy, and uh, considering what happened to her yesterday, to be still out there and uh, riding at the pace that she is to the RS125 is a uh, just a demonstration. Being minute lap, whether they be on a GSX-R1000 or a Honda 250 single cylinder, would be doing a pretty good job. Uh, a couple of the dudes on GSX-R600 uh, and 750s are probably pretty happy with the 119 as well. Looking at their times of around the 121, 124 mark. Banged up or not. <laughs> exactly. But uh, look at uh, Cavney now as he uh, kept in there within a point three of a second behind Lawson Walters. So that's going to be an interesting duel now. It's right on to our point two of a second, Phil. So uh, lock on Cavney. He loves it from that uh, hairpin all the way through that uh, that twisty section, that twisty and undulation section as they uh, bring it back onto the, this um, immensely long pit straight here in uh, Hidden Valley. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, as they came on the start finish straight, Cavney was right behind and he was actually uh, in a position where it was obscured by the uh, the, ball, the, the KTM of, uh, of Lawson Walters. I actually thought that he wasn't there or he was about to pull out of the slipstream, but he's managed to uh, lose a little bit on the straight, pull it back once again on the brakes down there into turn one. And interestingly, he told us on Thursday night he's actually running a new brake package this weekend. All of this, of course, in preparation for his wild card appearance at the Australian Grand Prix on the 20th of October. Our sole entrant into the uh, Moto 3 class, and uh, he'll be determined to fly the flag high and get those extra little bits and pieces, the ECU and everything else that is uh, granted the uh, any wildcard entry to make them as competitive as possible against the boys that have been uh, racing the Moto 3 class all year. And again, Philly closes right up under that hairpin. His corner speed through that tight section up the top of the circuit is remarkable, and this is where we and through here the uh, left right sections that you see them disappear from view there and come up on our, uh, well, minute-minute screen here at the moment. <laughs> it's admitted. 
That's the most politically correct way of saying that it looks like a paper like kaleidoscope. Well, that's, that's a very good description, Brax. That's what I've spent most of the weekend looking like. But uh, lucky we can see a lot of the racing action here from the uh, the commentary box because uh, at the moment we're watching our race leader Lawson Walters come down the start finish straight across the start finish line. A 1.16.6, the fastest lap of the race for Lawson Walters, a 16.8 for uh, Lachlan Cavney on that last lap. In fact, uh, that last lap was only one tenth of a second slower than Cavney's fastest, whereas uh, Walters set the fastest lap of the race and uh, has improved over his last lap as well. The gap back to uh, Taylor Ralph is about 12 seconds at the moment. But uh, these two are having a little race on their own. Taylor Ralph is out there getting some, uh, some good points after uh, what has been a difficult weekend for uh, her and the, uh, the team so far this weekend. You now um, the lap markers are starting to come into play with these um, pretty rapid little uh, 250cc single cylinder four-stroke GP style machines up against what well, basically road bikes that uh, the boys from the Terra uh, ride around up here. It's uh, the Honda RS 125, the sole two-stroke in the field of Glenn McDonald in fourth position. And I'd say if, uh, if he was about uh, three foot shorter and a bit lighter, that thing would be a bit uh, more rapid actually. But uh, his uh, round of RS125 really struggles. And I, I can understand why Ken Wooden, the late Ken Wooden, gave him the uh, nickname of the Big Mac, because he is a Big Mac. Well, he certainly is. He's a, almost a real-sized man on an uh, unreal-sized mo motorcycle. Well, he is a tall bloke. He is a, a very real-sized man. So, and also, too, that Gaz Ken used to love pointing out is that he's racing out there with the Junior Burgers. Yes. He be lost on the to come up with uh, something like that. So there goes Taylor Elf across the other uh, start-finish line to complete uh, five laps off the ten-lap journey. And our lead is coming out of turn one and turn two. And they're about to give someone the short back and sides. And there they go. This is the closest Cabin's been in the entire Ooh. five laps of this ten-lap journey. So we'll see what he can do as he exits turn four and comes up. He's normally pretty quick going into the hairpin up there. He just disappears from view momentarily. I wonder if Lawson Walters is uh, aware that uh, Cavney is almost camped on the, uh, the duck tail of the, uh, the KTM. He's probably hearing Lachlan saying, get out of the way. He's and uh, wondering, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> as they go through out of the view, it's uh, around the back of the monster platform there that uh, is right in the middle of the, the best vantage point here at uh, Hidden Valley Raceway this weekend, right in the middle of the Supercross track with uh, used to both sides of the uh, road racing track as well as they come onto the straight now they complete their six lap of their ten lap journey and uh, just looking back at the uh, the clubmans it's still gary lambert on bike number 31 leading from warwick price on uh, 71 there's about three seconds uh, on track between those two then it's uh, scott smith and uh, nunzio meter on their clubman uh, gsxrs as well in seventh and eighth place then it's uh, mick hefferin on his suzuki 250 uh, uh, RGV, then it's uh, Peter Troon on a uh, Yamaha YZF R6, then John Hefferin uh, in the Battle of the, uh, the Hefferins uh, in 11th place, Teresa Dunn and Marilyn Rogers uh, rounding out the, uh, the field, and I guess Teresa Dunn and Marilyn Rogers uh, are about to uh, know how fast you can get round here uh, if you're a female when Taylor Ralph gives them a, uh, a demonstration on how to ride a 250 uh, NSF uh, Honda Moto 3 machine. And knowing Taylor, she'd probably look inside and say, come on girls, follow me and I'll show you the quick way around. And and here she comes up to uh, up to turn five now, does Taylor Ralph. And our leaders are disappearing, but Lachlan Cavney is very much right on the back wheel of uh, Lawson Walters KDM at the moment. And he'll be loving this. Well, and it's a remarkable effort because we know that the KDM has got extra performance and uh, speed and horsepower over what the uh, Honda NSF 250 is. And it just shows oh. you how hard. That, uh, <laughs> Here he comes, Braxy. He is having a good dig now, yeah. isn't he? He's having a red hot dip. As uh, Nicholas Waters used to say, I love it when riders have a red hot dip. And that's exactly what he's doing. I know he is. He's not uh, backward in coming forward of having a oh, dip either. Oh, look how oh, close he is on the brakes. In fact, he's tried to go up the inside, I he think, did. on he the had, entry he to had the to first pull part it up. of turn one. He had to pull it up before I think he would have given him a bit of the uh, T-bone with the job. Because yeah, they, they take that turn one virtually as two separate corners, really, don't they? Running a little bit wide in the middle, like a, a bigger extended version of uh, turn two at uh, Sydney Motorsport Park. But Cavney at the moment uh, looks like he may have just lost a bike length or two up the straight there from uh, a, turn one to a, a motor corner. He had a bit of a wiggle on the way through there too as well as the front end just uh, tucked on him a little bit on the exit of turn four, just saw it slide across the track and he's just lost a bit of momentum coming out of uh, 
turned five hairpin as they, that's the further she's been separated from Lawson Walters in the last few laps. I wonder if uh, Lawson Walters got the pit for to uh, let him know that uh, Cabney was right behind. Well, Cabney just put in the fastest lap of the race and basically a 1 minute 16 in flat, 16.090. Well, a uh, 16.90 uh, would, uh, and the fact that it's red racing means that it should be a new lap record for the other Moto 3 class. Could well be. So it is a 16.245 from Ollie Simpson was the lap record. Is that last year? How did you call that? Just as it just happened. Just, uh, we're kept up to date by the excellent work from the people from CompuTime in exactly. the other uh, room next door to uh, let us know all of these uh, these good statistics. And uh, there's nothing I love more at racing than uh, watching people race hard and uh, a couple of good statistics to go along with it. Yeah, well, he's, uh, Lock Lawson Walters went close. He was uh, a tenth of a second outside it, but uh, Lock and Cabney have really pulled the pin as they head up towards uh, uh, turn five yet again, I'd say. Well, they're giving the uh, few of the clubman guys a uh, demonstration on how to ride their local circuit, that's for sure, as uh, we see Taylor Ralph trying to uh, sort her way through uh, some of the, uh, the back markers as well. One and a half laps to go with this final race of the Moto 2 category here at uh, Hidden Valley, as well as the 125cc GP category that's being led by Gordon McDonald, so he'll uh, score some points in the Australian Championship. Oh, there we go, there's Walters, there's Cabney right behind him. Round through the final corners and down onto the uh, long start finish straight here. Is Cabney close enough to take advantage of uh, the slipstream? The Honda may be able to uh, get uh, get up level if he's got the advantage of the slipstream, but I think we'll see at the end of the straight bracks is where the KTM really starts to uh, come into its own. As soon as it gets in a straight line, it comes into its own. You can use that extra power. Because look how much Cabney closes up on the brakes going into turn one. He's now with the, he had about seven, eight bike lengths difference as they cross the start finish line. Now he's at like it'd be two bike lengths as he looks for another line around. So that's how close lock from Cabney is on the Honda. It's almost like he throws out the parachute at the end of the start finish straight just to try and haul the bike up in uh, in time for uh, for that very tricky turn one. Well, he's got about half a lap left to uh, see if he can actually nail a, a victory here and uh, relegate Lawson Walters the second. You can just see then how uh, the difference in size as Lawson Walters starts to uh, grow into well, a, a decent-sized teenager all of being a 14 years old. There's now the, oh, there's a what market oh, coming to Cabney. Cabney's got it. He's taken advantage of it. He's, um, Lawson Walters got balked and Lachlan Cabney's gone, ha ha, you've got the inside line, I've got the outside line, I'm coming round. Well, uh, do you reckon he's going to uh, just put his head down now and charge as hard as he can? I think he's got enough of a lead rack, so he might be able to get there to the line. He's thrown the tank away to get further down under the paint, I think he has. If he's going to make it to the line, it is a long drag. They're following each other like a uh, line astern at the moment, but it will be Lachlan Cabney. Yes, he is. Punches the air in delight, and uh, Lawson Walters punches the tank in disgust. So there's two completely different scenarios uh, of uh, well, joy and uh, well, not dismay. even sorrow. I was going to say something else, but you can't say it on a family show. But uh, well, it just shows you there. You've got to be there till the end. And it was funny that uh, Lawson Walters was actually complaining about the slow riders yesterday. I don't think he'd be doing too much complaining about it. Uh, yes, um, now after he's been managing to get that win of. Um, yeah, Lawson Walters will be absolutely fuming at that uh, he took the wrong option of getting around that uh, back marker, who would have been, uh, I think that might have been Mick Heffernan actually, on the Suzuki RGV 250 that will get, gain the wrath of uh, Lawson Walters and the handshake of Lachlan Cabney as uh, he's managed to take the win.